Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus and Phase 2 Part 5 of our 3D top-down shooter. By the end of this video, you'll be able to save or export the level from our level generator tool with the click of a fake button in the inspector. Hey folks, so we have this really annoying issue that every time I load my level generator, it <laughs> generates this now quite complicated slow map uh, a million times, once for each setter we have in our map script as those setters and variables get loaded. So let's start by creating a little button over here where we can adjust all the parameters and then we can just click to regenerate the level instead of every time I change it having this lag where it has to regenerate the level. Of course we could just come up with a much more efficient uh, flood fill algorithm or something but I think that's what we're gonna do. This is an easy solution here. So under our random number generator seed Let's create a new export variable. This is going to be a boolean, and we'll just call it uh, generate level. We'll set it equal to false. Oops, not Python here. False, and we'll give it a set get, and we'll call it set generate level. So this is kind of a weird name, and there isn't currently a way to create a button in the inspector to run code in a tool. So we're kind of going to fake it. We're just going to create a boolean variable, a tick box that we're going to tick, and every time we tick it, we'll just use that as our button. We won't actually even change it true or false. We don't really care. So let's go down here below our cord and ready to our setters, and we'll create this function. Uh, it's going to give us the new value, but we're actually just going to throw it away. We don't even care. So here, we're going to generate the map. And that's all we need. Let's go check it. I'm going to hit Control S here, save that. Ugh, annoying. It's going to run all this. I have a really big map. I should probably change the size of it so I don't have to deal with his lag. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, just to prevent the lag here, I'm going to go back down to 4 and let's say 5. Nice small little level. 7. Okay, and uh, now to generate a new level, I just click this button and you can see that it's generating the level. Um, it is still gener regenerating the level every time I change a value. So let's go turn that off. So when we set a background color, let's not regenerate the entire level every time that happens. Uh, when we change the heights, let's not generate the level there. Uh, we don't need it in the ready method. Let's path skip that. Mm, I would like to leave it when we change the seed because generally when we're changing the seed it's because we have all the other settings the way we want them and we just want a different randomness in the level. So we'll we'll let it regenerate the map when we change the seed but when we set the width of the level or the height of the level we don't need to generate it or the obstacle density. Okay so now we go back to the map. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to change the size. It is still doing it because of course I never saved it there. Control S. Now uh, as I change the side it does not update. Let's change the size a nice big one. We'll reduce the obstacle density. Let's change some height, one of the colors to green. And then I'll click generate level. There we go. Okay, that's gonna make life a little easier for us. And I hope when we load the level as well, it will only generate the map once. Actually, it'll probably do it twice. Once for the seed setter and once for the this Boolean setter. Okay, the next thing we're gonna try and do is I want to have some parameters, like let's say these, and I want this to actually be a level in my game. So I need to save this somehow. And if I go up here and right click, I can try to save the branches scene, but I can't do that with the root node as well. This root node doesn't actually have any children. At least it doesn't appear like it does here. So let's go to our code and first let's see if we can get all those child nodes, all the children, to show up under the map. And we can do that because although we set our new obstacles to be children of the map. We don't actually set the map node, this spatial node, to be the owner of those obstacles, which is how it, they get put into the scene tree here. So the first thing we add when we generate our map, let's go down to the generate map method, is uh, we add the ground. So we'll go down to the ground, add child, we add the ground, and then we'll also tell the ground that its owner is going to equal self. Self because we want it to equal the node that owns this script, which is the map. And the other place we're going to need to do that is where we add obstacles. Uh, so where we actually add the obstacles to the map, create obstacle right here, add child, new obstacle in our, uh, whoops, in our create obstacle function. So we'll do the same thing. So any new obstacles that, that are added to the map, we're going to set the owner 
equal to self. And there you go. You can see I, I, once I saved it, it generated the map. And you can see all those obstacles. Now the ground, everything is on the map and selectable. Okay, but that doesn't really help us yet enough because we still can't right click and save this level to use it somewhere. So what we want to do is we want to have a node, a child node of the map, which we could say call level since that's what our level root node is actually called. We want the owner of all of these nodes to be that level and we want all these nodes to be a children of that level. So let's go back to our script. And somewhere at the top, we'll create a new variable here. We can just do it here. Variable, we'll call it level, and we'll give it a type hint. This is gonna be a spatial. Okay. Uh, every time I save, it's still bleep bloop generating map. You know what? I'm gonna remove when we set the seed so it does it one last time here. So it'll only now regenerate a map once when we save it and only when we click that fake button. So if I change the seed now, it's not gonna regenerate the map until I, boom, click that. It'll just save us a little time here. Okay, you know, I could also just reduce the size here. Let's do that. Let's go 11 by seven. Yeah, that's nice for a low level. Okay, uh, back to the script here. So we've created a level variable, which is a spatial. So in our generate level, Oops, where's our uh, generate generate map here? After we've cleared the map, we're gonna add level. Now this is kind of like adding the root node, so we'll just do it, we can do it in order here after we clear the map. So function, add level, and we'll do it very similar to how we do the ground here. So I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna take all this, paste it here. We don't need to set the width and the depth that we already know the level is going to be a spatial. So we'll just go a new spatial here. This is not a scene, so we're not going to instantiate it. We're just going to create a new spatial node. And this is the level variable we already created up above. We'll add the level as a child to the map, and we'll set the level's owner to be the map as well, self, this script. Okay. Um, Add level isn't declared. Whoopsie, missing an L there. Hit S and where'd our level go? Oh, it's right there, spatial. We should probably give it a name. So after we create the new node, let's go level.name and we'll set the name equal to level, probably help. There it is, there's our level. Okay, but now we want the ground and everything underneath it to fall underneath our level. So one thing we can do here if I go control R, that'll be replace. So for example, in the ground here, anytime we add a child, we don't wanna add a child to the map, we wanna add a child to the level. So let's just do a replace. We'll search for add child, and I'll just put an opening brace there. And we wanna replace that with level dot add child. So we're adding the child to the level, not self or not this script's node. So let's find the first one. Here it is, add ground, so we'll replace, and you should see now it's gonna be level.addChild. And the next one will be when we create obstacles, that's good, we'll replace that one. Next one is when we add the level itself, which we do not wanna replace, so that's fine. Okay, let's control S here, and now you can see the level has all its children, right? And 3D, we shouldn't have wrecked everything, and we should still be able to change, uh, change stuff here and regenerate the level by clicking our fake button. That's not, why is that color so bad? Hmm, this should be black, shouldn't it? Looks like we have a one off by one error in our shader here because the last row should be black, which is probably this one. Um, but we actually want this one to be black, right? Okay, that's okay, that, that'll be something to fix in a future bug fix episode. Okay. So good, we have our level, we have everything under the level, and now we should actually just be able to save our level. Um, before we do that, I just wanna make a note here that although we added the level as the parent of obstacles and the ground here, level.addChild, the obstacles to show up in the scene tree, the owner is the root of the scene tree. So it's still the owner of all the obstacles here is still gonna be the map node or self. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's go level two, we'll right click it. We'll go save branch as scene. And let's go to 
in our level generator, I'm just gonna create a new folder here. Create folder, we'll call it levels. Maybe I'll call it generated levels. Uh, we can, Sure, I can call this level two. I'll save it and let's see how well that worked. So if I go to my generated levels, I can open up level two and there's level two. This is straight up level. It has no level script here, right? It's not a tool anymore, this is the level. So now we can go in our level generator, we can generate some levels uh, of various sizes, heights, and different interesting things, and save them and use them in our game. Almost, not quite, because <laughs> we don't have a navigation mesh on here yet, and we'll also need to, of course, incorporate bring it into our game through a script and start using these levels. So we'll save that for the next one because I have been getting way too long and I'm trying to keep them under 20 minutes, so let's do a few shorter ones here. Okay, last thing, uh, wouldn't it be nice instead of right clicking and saving this if we just had a little button that we could save the level for us and save it in our script? So uh, that's not too hard to do, let's do it. I'm gonna pull that back and in our code here, let's create a new Boolean variable just like we did here to create this uh, fake button hack. And we'll for this one we'll do save level. We might wanna call this button too. Uh, save level and we'll go set save level, that's a weird name but it does let us know this is like one of those fake button setter things. Um, and down here, we can create the function and the new val again, we're just gonna throw it away. We don't, we're not actually setting it. So when we click this button, we want to generate a new packed scene and save it to our file system. Okay, so there's actually a packed scene class, let's go call this packed scene, our variable, and we'll make it a packed scene uh, dot new, so a new packed scene object. And then packed scene has a method called pack. And we wanna pack the level, the level variable, which is this and everything below it, into the scene. We need a path where we wanna save it, so let's call this the scene resource path. And this is something we can probably hard code in there. And instead of typing this out, why don't we just drop this file name in there uh, and see if that works. See if we can save it to that location. It'll just be overwriting this level, but we can fix that in a moment. Let's just get it to work. And then finally, we're gonna use a resource saver, which is, allows us to save the scene by passing it the path and then the resource. So let's pass the path, we'll pass the resource itself, which is the pack scene that we're saving, and see how this works. Okay, uh, let's just check our output here in case any errors pop up. So we'll go back to our level, 3D level here, and let's just click uh, save the level. What happens? Oh, we get a whole bunch of errors. <laughs> so there's a reason for this. If we go back to our level, uh, one problem we have is we actually need to set the owner of all the objects here to the level so it's in the levels scene, the levels tree, because that's what ends up getting packed in to the scene. So before we actually pack the level, we want to go get all those children. So let's just go for child in level.getchildren. And we'll just say child.owner. Before we save it, we'll set the owner of all the children to the level. Now, when we save this, it just actually generated the map and ran that code. But uh, if we go to 3D view here, let's regenerate the map. That's good, so they all show up here because currently the map is still the owner. But then when we go to save it, let's save the level. Uh, it should work, so it saved the level, I think. Did it save over? We should probably change some stuff. Let's, uh, let's change that to red. That didn't help. Oh yeah. <laughs> to red and then uh, we'll generate the level good and then we'll save it so it says it's saving it let's go open up uh, level 2 here and that's it that's our level cool did it automatically uh, but we don't want to save over our level every time so why don't we provide an option to give the level a name close this one here uh, let's go back into the code we'll do one more exported variable above our save level so we'll export a string and we'll call it level name. 
And by default, let's just call it new level, I guess. And then when we save our level, instead of using level two, we'll use uh, percent %s here, and then we can pass it the level name variable to provide as our scene name. So why don't we try that now? We'll go, I'm just gonna save it. Um, <laughs> it's annoying, it runs this when we save it. So let's delete all our generated levels here. Delete those, they're gone. We'll go into here, let's call it uh, asparagus and save it. And there it is, asparagus.tscn, right where we expected it. Not bad. Uh, the only thing left now before we can actually use our levels is we need to incorporate some navigation in here, which we'll do in the next tutorial.